impact where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> this is Nan Tyneberg of the Palm Springs Public Library's Local History Project. I am here today with Mrs. Betty Burnett and Mrs. Rosine Supple, both of whom have had a long association with Smoke Tree Ranch. We are going to talk a bit about their early days in the desert and about the history of Smoke Tree. Today's date is the 3rd of June, 1987, and we are at the Frederick Supples residence in Smoke Tree. All right, Betty, we're going to start with you, and you came from uh, San Francisco when you first came to Palm Springs, and what year was that? I first came to Palm Springs in 1936 to stay and for what, a season. What, uh, what were the circumstances that brought you to Palm Springs? Well, I had a son who didn't seem to be thriving in the San Francisco climate, and it was suggested that he might do better on the desert. So I, we headed for the desert, and that was it. That first year you were not at Smoke Tree. No, you I was in, in town. I was in the village, correct? as it was called yes, then. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. What, what, was, what was that first year like? Well, the first year, the, I, well, I did not have a natural affinity with the desert, and, uh, and nothing that I experienced particularly in there developed any greater affinity. I got <laughs> fond of the desert after I came to the ranch. It was, uh, uh, Palm Springs was a very small town, a small village, and the social life was exceedingly active. And since I had never been accustomed to spending my entire life sw swinging the cocktail circuit, <laughs> I was not entranced with it, shall we say. <laughs> yeah. How did you uh, connect with Smoke Tree? Uh, it came through the Markhams. When uh, Fred and Maisabel took over active management of Smoke Tree Ranch, they revised a great many things, and one of them, they wanted to change the school from a rest and orange juice affair okay. to a real school. And uh, they were asking for people who might be interested in teaching at the school or running the school, and I applied, along with a great many other people. Well, we will get into that in a minute. Mm -hmm. that's, but that brought that's me to the ranch. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Rosine about your first arrival in the desert. <laughs> Okay, Rosine, you were a young girl with your family when you first came to California, yeah. and you came from the Midwest? From Michigan, Detroit. Yes. And you, you did not originally come to Palm Springs, the desert area. You, you spent your time we elsewhere. Stayed, we lived in Beverly Hills, and then I don't, I don't really remember how we discovered Smoke Tree, but we did come down and stay at La Quinta, and I do remember that. I don't remember the sequence of how we ended up at Smoke Tree. And that would have been what year that you... 1934, 35? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Nan, don't hit me there. No. <laughs> <laughs> was, was your house... Did you build the house? My father built, bought the house when it was halfway built. I see, yes. And then completed it. You talked about the fact that there were very few families then, as of course, as opposed to I now. think Betty would remember the families better than I, but... The numbers. Are we talking about 12 families? Oh, that no. Sounds no, we're talking about, about, maybe about 24, maybe. That, this is, I mean, very early? Mm-hmm. Yes, I think. Staymates, Markham. Yes, that group. Mm-hmm. And how Gilmore's. many? Gilmore's. Mm -hmm. How many now? Eighty. Eighty families, mm -hmm. approximately? Eighty homes on the ranch. This is going to be a very redundant question because Smoke Tree is known, of course, for keeping itself pretty much as it was originally. But did it look different at the time? Oh, yes. It was it was real barren mm -hmm. desert, and uh, I remember we put in a lawn which was revolutionary. Yes, <gasps> and against the bylaws. <laughs> oh, definitely. <Yeah. laughs> but, I, but you you redeemed yourself. Now. Yes, no, we kept this home. one very yes. very desert. Yes. But. I might, I might say something about Rosine's home, if I might. Certainly, that and, it was and let me mention that the footage at the beginning of the tape is, is of your, your, your front area and your, the back area, which is, is very much desert planning. I was yes. speaking of her father's home, okay. your, your parents' home. Mm -hmm. It was originally built by the ranch, and it was known as the Palms. And it was, oh, I didn't yes, know that. Yes, and Harry, uh, uh, the manager, Bachelor, was, I remember Harry he Bachelor. lived in the house for a while. And it was used. Then it was. Uh, and then your father bought the ranch and remodeled it considerably. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, and it was named, of course, for the palms, which oh, were I'd near that. that. Mm -hmm. yeah, if I'd ever known it. Yes. <laughs> and then. Okay. But it certainly, as compared to the rest of the town, Smoke Tree has maintained the feeling that it. I think it's the only place mm -hmm. that I can think of around here that is deserty. Yes, it's maintained mm -hmm. that. 
Betty, you really know the history of Smoke Tree. You, in fact, are putting together a documentary of some footage of Smoke Tree and writing writing a history of, of the area. This was on the, the grounds, the original grounds, of a community called Palmdale. And briefly, describe what Palmdale was. Well, Palmdale was a promotion, a, a very grandiose promotion, in which they were, the literature from it is unbelievably flowery and promises everything, sounds like paradise. Mm -hmm. Utopian community. Yes, and uh, they had many plans for it, and the part which was, the only part which was really ever completed was the little narrow gauge railroad, which I'm sure you have other material on, and that was completed and really not used. Then uh, with the, it, the whole thing collapsed for lack of, fu lack of funds and just melted away back into the desert, and that was it. No, no, no trace of it remained. Was it, uh, you've mentioned, of course, the, you both have mentioned the Markhams extensively. Was it Fred Markham's brainchild to develop this area? Uh, the first uh, work that was done in developing this was done in 1929, and Charles Doyle was the one who made an uh, uh, effort to start this place and had certain plans and so forth about it. But once again, even with the help of certain Eastern people and all who put some money into it, tried to, it did not have enough money to develop in the way it should have been developed. So really, Smoke Tree would never have been had it not been, or would never have continued if it hadn't been for Fred Markham, who came in first as a, as a, a financial backer and a silent partner. That was in 1934. Then uh, in 1936, Fred uh, became really very interested in the, in the whole project and a man of considerable business experience and all and background and forceful, mm -hmm. shall we say. He decided that he would be willing to develop it and so his uh, pr uh, presentation to Mr. Doyle was to buy or sell, that either Mr. Doyle could continue on his own or Mr. Markham would buy him out. So uh, he decided to sell. Well, they were never partners as such then. Uh, there was a, what was called the Mardo Corporation, which was in operation for a short time. Mm -hmm. That uh, They really were not partners as such. I no, see. it was always very, uh, the, the money side was heavily on Fred's side. And uh, he kept, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Doyle managed the ranch one season very early. Maybe at that time, and he was connected with the very, very early things that came along. But that would have been lost mm -hmm. just as Palmdale was, had it not been for Fred. Then when Fred took over, do you want more of this? That, that's fine. When, uh, yes. when uh, uh, Fred Markham took over in 1936, he began a program of improvements in buildings, which was to foreshadowed what was to come at Smoke Tree. It was always kept very simple and very deserty, mm -hmm. but uh, it, all the things that were needed for a comfortable resort. And he, of course, lived here and took a, a tremendous interest in, in Smoke Tree, he and his wife. Yes. His wife, uh, uh, do you want to describe her uh, well, somewhat? I would defy anybody to really describe <laughs> Maisie Bell no, because uh, she was Maisie Bell? She, yes, yes. Maisie Bell. She was a rare soul and wonderful woman. She had everything that anyone could wish for in the way of natural gifts, shall we say. Mm -hmm. She was charming and intelligent and businesslike when she had to be, and in generally and highly uh, had great had ideals, definite ideals, which uh, never offended anyone because they were always beautifully. Uh, sugar-coated, shall we say. <laughs> they went down easily and they were agreeable. So She's a very strong woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. She kind of mothered us all, I remember that. When in doubt, talk to Maisie mm -hmm. Bell about anything. So they, they, mm -hmm. were, they felt a great deal of, of uh, belonging and that this was proprietorship toward, toward mm -hmm. Smoke Tree. And, and they, uh, they took great care in mm -hmm. Smoke Tree. I think it was interesting, your description of, of how really altruistic Fred Markham was in as far as the town goes because when the town was incorporating he really didn't need the town the town sort of needed his at support. that moment yes because yes, this was a very self-contained mm -hmm. community as far as water and utilities and so forth. that's true but he does uh, Fred <coughs> was very concerned about the other person he did it, uh, it was a wonderful combination of a very successful definite driving businessman mm -hmm. and a very understanding person. Of course, you know, Fred died and then Maisie Bell continued at the ranch without him. And the ranch was eventually, when, when was it sold? Sold to... Uh, uh, I'll tell you, I'm just, oh. I'm just picking up the date here. Okay. 
it's, it's not. Well, it, it should be because it's, it, I've just been working important. with it, and. Uh, but it, the, the important thing, I think, is it was sold to the, the colonists. The colonists, yes, yes, the colony, colony group. Oh, that was way back when, in uh, 1945, uh, I think it was. 45, 45 was when, I was just thinking with it, because work began at one time, but it was completed in 1945, and at that time, the colony group took over, and they, they bought everything, lock, stock, and barrel. They bought the guest ranch and all the, on all the acreage, the entire thing. Then it was rather interesting that in addition, to having the owning all the property, each one collectively, that was done collectively. Mm -hmm. Then individually, each one owned his own property, his own home mm -hmm. and uh, land. So that uh, was the original group, very, they did a remarkable job too. Your father, of course, was Yeah, Dad there. was on that committee, mm -hmm. I, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Fred Johnson. Yes. And uh, Bruce Bill. Burrett. Bruce Burrett and Bill, um, Dean. Bill Dean. Yes, a lot of very capable men. Mm -hmm. who would, and, and fortunately, they were, have been interested in maintaining the philosophy of the ranch, mm -hmm. as the Markhams had it. What was the philosophy? What, what was the purpose, as opposed to, let's say, a deep well or a desert inn or? Well, I, as Maisie Bell said, I have the quote here someplace, she said that her uh, great deep desire, um, I'm just paraphrasing now, that uh, their deep desire was not only have a place to rest and, uh, and, and enjoy recreation, but also a place for spiritual regeneration before people return to the cares of the world and the demands of the outside life. On a practical level, the difference, I think, was that this was residential and very oriented toward horseback ride, toward riding, uh, mm -hmm. and self-contained. One could mm -hmm. live here, and but it also served as uh, as a resort. Oh yes, and it was a rest, a definite place to, mm -hmm. to have a holiday. And of course, and with a great place mm -hmm. for families. Oh, yes. Yes. always yes. family. Yes. Are, that's right, family Rosie. Mm -hmm. Always yes. a family. And of course, there were two parts to it, you see. There was the colony where people came and opened their homes and stayed. And there was a guest ranch where they yes. came and, and stayed. There people, a shorter amount of time. Yes, yes. but they could, a lot of them, many yes. people stayed a, quite a long time. Oh yeah, they'd stay for months, mm -hmm, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes yeah. the whole season. Yes, and they'd come out on the train, bring their mm -hmm. trunks. Was there a difference, that. Rosine, when, when you were growing up here, and of course you wintered here, you spent a great deal of time here when you were a young child. The people who were rather temporary as opposed to the people that, that really well, had homes here and, and... We were always urged to sort of mingle with the guests, but then you, if you live in a community, you develop your own friends, yes. and if you don't really I guess I didn't spend too much time with the transients, mm -hmm. and but I never felt there was any feeling between the two as sure. rivalry or yes. anything. Yes, a lot of people did mm -hmm. feel that though. No, I, I, I think it wasn't a it wasn't a dominant feeling by any means. It's kind of crazy anyway. Yes, and then uh, especially there were uh, there were really two classifications of coming or more in the guest ranch because there were those who came season after season, mm -hmm. and they and then of course they put their children in school, right. and so they came to know them in, in the school. Well, and a lot of them eventually ended up being colonists. That's right. That was a really a stream. For, for example. Yes. Oh, and any number. Mm -hmm. Went first to the guest ranch and then to the colony. Uh, I think Smoke Tree is known as, as a place where there were architectural and environmental limitations, and we joked about the fact that that's been broken over the years, but... Flagrantly in some... <laughs> Would an architect, let's say back in the late 30s, have a great deal of trouble unless he conformed to the architectural committee, which I assume was very strong, uh, building something here unless it were ranch style? Well, it seemed to me that there was a lot of uh, building going on during the summer mm. <laughs> on the architectural mm. committee and no one else was here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but by and large, people really maintained. They tried to, yes. Mm -hmm. The same feeling. And it was interesting, we were talking this morning about, I just assumed that everybody had in, the, in one's backyard had desert planting, but that is not no, not that's the case. Not you true. have preserved the natural look. Yeah, we've and made but, a point of it. Mm -hmm. But other people have not. The a lot of people are. are. Well, are. See, even some of the fronts are pretty city-fied. Not too much. With box owns, hedges yeah. and so forth. Well, only one I know of. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and then, but and in the backyards, isn't it right, Rosine, that they have made an effort to keep a put a wall around it or yes. flowers around it. So as you drive through, well, you'll see when you drive through the sure. colony, you don't you you see the fronts because I know from mm. taking people through, they're not aware that in the back may be a pool. Yes, no, yeah, a pool yes. or a and, familiar with and your and flowers. Street and flowers mm -hmm. just assumed that everybody mm -hmm. else. Well, the great it is that it is the desire, mm -hmm. and it's a very wise thing to do. There are probably more stories over the years of people trying to do interesting things and not being allowed to do them. Or I think Paul Truesdale yeah, built the first pool, didn't he? Yes, Paul, and, yes, Paul, and, and Paul built the pool, and then he came to me, and he was simply aghast because he said, Betty, I seem to have done a terrible thing. He said, I built a pool, and I built it only because I have quite a few guests, and I didn't want to dominate to, you know, take over the mm -hmm. big pool. So he said, I thought I better, and he said, no idea there was anything against it. So he said, will you do something for me? And uh, I said, certainly. And he said, will you tell anybody who asked you that I'm perfectly willing to fill it in and plant it to, plant it to pansies? <laughs> Did he ever? <laughs> no, by that, no, <laughs> then they realized that. Then everyone. Everybody had yes, pools. then yeah. they changed oh, the, yeah. <clears throat> But at one time they felt that if there, I believe they felt if there were too many pools, it would increase the humidity. And of course, they discovered that that was no problem because people came here for dry air. Mm -hmm. And they thought that that would increase the humidity. But now everyone who wishes has a pool, but they're pretty well concealed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were talking before about restrictions, uh, not just environmental and architectural, but Rosina and I were talking about membership. And I guess we sort of came to the conclusion that a lot of the restrictions were unwritten. That I believe so. Certain, there, there have been minority uh, oh yes. people who have belonged to Spring mm -hmm, Tree. Yes. You, I, you have a funny story about when you first noticed the, that there were I don't restrictions. Or the, I think no. we better mm -hmm. okay. just skip that because it really no, was right. not. It was not a dominant thing here. Okay. It was just. It was just sort of. Do you know what we're talking about? Yes, I do know. Uh, so I think that, however, is not of general interest. No, I don't, I'm afraid not. Okay. <laughs> and most of the people, you know, they are, they all, uh, they were recommended by friends, they are friends, and it's just, uh, and so it has the procedure, which happens in a great many places, right. that you try to keep people who are compatible, which doesn't mean that they have to be exactly the same, because right. there are many wonderful people of all different mm -hmm. interests and types in parts of the country. Betty, it's very interesting that, that your involvement here initially was to teach and yes. that you, you uh, maintained and taught a, a working school mm -hmm. for uh, those families that, that came here for a long period of time and even a shorter period of time. Do you want to describe, wh first of all, where was the, uh, the facility? The it, was, it was on the guest ranch and it was on the uh, the west border of the ranch, not far from the present gate, because mm -hmm. the gate of cut time was down at on so Highway 111. Building? Three That's buildings. We had three little buildings. There was the main building, and then there was the little adobe school, which was a darling little thing for the younger children. Mm -hmm. Then there was a thatched sort of a play house there, and of course had uh, a playground with swings mm -hmm. and all that. And uh, it, but uh, and only a morning class. Only had morning classes because we could cover the work. And, and you taught everything? Yes, anything, whatever they wanted. And For any length of time, it didn't matter. Were, you had obviously a rapport with, with uh, the, the kinds of education that they were getting back at home. They would mm -hmm. bring their homework and, and Then we would. And you would. Keep them in. up in there, yes. It was sort of a multiple tutoring plan, all of them, no, no class. Very individualized, I, it sounds like. Yes, yes. I asked no questions. I asked <laughs> no questions. I, I was I, trying to remember you. I know you taught me French, but did you teach me math, too? The math was what we were working with, mm -hmm. that, we, that your father and was so French. interested in. <laughs> yeah. So, and yeah. you And you taught uh, a, a variety of age groups, Yes, obviously. yes, and of course I had help, you know, you met. Right. Uh, Mary Ellis right. Rocky came with me the first year, the one you met this morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. T tell me a bit about, not only were you instrumental in finding assistance, but you were instrumental in, in finding junior assistants who worked at Smoke Tree. Would that be the, the did, right description? Did, it didn't go quite that way. Okay. The ones who were the, uh, uh, the junior, you t taught the younger groups and I the see. younger girls. Mm -hmm were also junior hostesses because you see they only had a morning session 
and uh, so they had lots of free time and they yeah, helped. Is that where Johnny came into the Yes, year? Johnny was one of my teachers. Mm -hmm. So they, I was said the only trouble was <laughs> it was hard to hang on to them because they, the things that made them so good in the school, intelligent and good looking and, and, <laughs> and nice with all these, well yes, <laughs> they were married and left. <laughs> Oh, but then they c mm -hmm. attractive yes yes they weren't chosen for their people. beauty but it just yeah. <laughs> but it they could have been they could have been yes you were also a party planner you were kind of a jack of all trades that's at, right at smoke tree and took a hand in whatever was going what, on what duties did that entail it was just but let's have a party and so we'd find a theme and all it was all done in a very informal fashion because i long i decided right away that the people who came to the ranch had been every place, seen everything, and done everything. So we wouldn't try to outdo anybody. We just try to have something a little different. So it was like, oh, uh, well, we'd go over to the cane breaks and get the canes, the, the crew, and bring them back and fix up the dining room. There was no recreation hall then. I see. Just had to clear the dining room and have the parties there. So it was it all more or less spontaneous. Rosine, do you remember, you were too young at the time to partake, uh, but your parents, were they involved? In well, the I don't think they were got involved too often because my dad was quite ill. I see. And uh, if they did any partying, I think they did it at home. Mm -hmm. Yes. There was a lot of home mm -hmm. entertaining at that time, anyway. Oh, yeah, because mm -hmm. the clubs weren't as, in the village and mm -hmm. as important or as active yes. as they are now. It really didn't yeah. exist. That sort of mm -hmm. happened in the mm -hmm. later. Betty, something else that, that you, you've done in connection with Smoke Tree is write and, and publish, in fact, the, the ranch, Smoke Tree Ranch publication called The, uh, the Desert Rat. <laughs> and The Rat. <laughs> we have a, a copy here. I think what we'll do is uh, we'll probably leave you and Rosine, we'll leave through some of these pictures. I'll get behind the camera and then we can focus in on it and see if we can come up with some some uh, some pictures and some commentary. Flood? No, this is just, just, oh, right. just turned out big, big <laughs> oh, <laughs> the it's, pool. It's very yes. ba barren looking because well, it, it, if we can hold it up. Mm -hmm. Well, it had a lot. The trees were all getting started very nicely there. As you said, be careful. This thing is so old. Well, oh, this is, is all built up in here. Yeah, this is where the uh, this is where Cottages. we have the bowling the bowling green is in here. This mm -hmm. is the pool. This is the pool area, and that was the water tower, which was a signal. It was not only a centerpiece for the ranch, but for the entire valley, because it was one thing that showed in this absolutely open land, way miles away, and it was lighted at night with the uh, uh, lights up here, and it looked more rather like a birthday cake. So that was a landmark. It's great fun to climb up to. Oh, yes, and uh, absolutely verboten, shall we say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if anybody, True. and all the children, if they were nervous about being on the ranch, because it was quite an acreage, we just tell them they could never get lost, because they just look, just look for the tower, go to the tower, was and then... Was that always there, as, as uh, long it was, as you could remember? Uh, oh, it, it came from the very beginning of the, of, of the ranch, but it was taken down, it, had, it was uh, taken down, and uh, that was quite a thing when it was pulled down. They felt it wasn't quite safe, but it, it would have been perfectly safe because you couldn't even get it down hardly. <laughs> so that was a, that was a landmark every place. The only two things you it really was could too see. too tempting, though, to yeah. yes. the kids. I see. About the only things you could see, as on the on the open valley floor, uh, was this and the smoke tr and the uh, El Mirador Tower would show. That's right. So those were the two high things. And this it just shows that some of the roads here, and the over here is the ranch house, which doesn't show very clearly, but it's there. And that that was one tennis court, the one tennis court. Now there are about six or eight, something like that. Oh, at least. Mm-hmm. Those of And this was the little kiva, which was a party house, and it <laughs> had quite a history. It had been originally, in about 1930, was down by the old gate, and it was sort of a tea house. And then it was moved around and finally ended up here and was made into a party house and served as that until the kiva was built, the big new kiva. And this was the little place where you looked out to the pool and to the tennis courts. And that was enlarged to almost twice its size eventually, but had mm -hmm. the same idea. So that gives some Something idea. Was falling out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there was some skippings I have here. Rosie, do you want to show your, your two pictures? Oh, there's a darn picture of you in this book, Rosine. Can find it. Yes. 
Well, I don't know if you've seen this, Betty. Oh, that was at that Indian gathering, was it? No, this was when we had what, rodeos right down here. Mm hmm Remember right? Oh, yes. What's there now? I guess Vaughn's Market. Part of it, yes, and part of it is dead land is little of it's open still, mm -hmm. but that was a very big expense. But this was a big thing. Every Rosine Richards at mm -hmm. about 10. I would think so, yeah. That would probably be before. Yes, because here are the people up on the bleachers mm -hmm. looking at that. That's it. That's when the ranch was on the Rodeo circle, Circuit. We all had these blue shirts representing smoke tree and yellow ties. You that probably been, what probably had happened, if I may remind you, is you probably had ridden in the parade and mm -hmm. then come out to the Rodeo. That's probably it, mm -hmm. yeah. Because uh, we have some good film of you riding the, in the blue shirt and the yellow and the whole, <laughs> the, the prize winning group. That's, uh, <coughs> I remember uh, the time when we were group. riding right behind uh, the USC band and just as we passed the judges stand, the band struck up whatever it was and my horse acted it very peculiar and fell down in front of the judge's stand. Oh, no. We won anyway though. Yes, you yeah. certainly did. And <coughs> this one was taken later. Oh, that's a good shot. I graduated from a pinto pony to a sorrel mare. And her name, unfortunately, was Helen, which is sort of a strange name for a <laughs> horse. But <laughs> yes, Rosine was, you were a very good horsewoman, and you were in all the things, rode out to all the, oh, yes. the rode out to all the uh, picnics those days and, are gone forever, and breakfast though. rides and all of those things. Mm -hmm. You were always out on those. Yeah. Constantly. Mm -hmm. Rosine, let's talk a little bit about some of the memorable people or, or families that were at Smoke Tree. Uh, well, of course, Walt Disney it was probably okay. their biggest yes. star, and he was a wonderful man. He was very active here. Very wasn't active. He? he designed some of the newer cottages. Remember yes, that? The studios did, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. under his, uh, mm -hmm. at his request, yes. The ones that are 24, 26, yes. and 28? Yes, yes. You talked about Tex Miller. He oh, Tex more or Miller. Less raised yeah, he raised children. us all, and he taught us how to ride. And he owned, he actually owned the stables, was that? He owned the stables, I believe. Yes, he, he did. He owned all the horses, and uh, I think he rented the land from the Markhams. Was that the way it worked? Uh, the, la uh, the land belonged to the ranch, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think title has been given to any part of the ranch land. I think even the present stables must be leased, I'm quite sure on that. Oh, yeah. I, because I think all the original acreage is still intact with long leaves, leases down mm -hmm. along the highway and all. Excuse me for getting away from the no, from uh, Tex Miller. No, this is Miller. terrific. Getting no, the, the ranch there does own no that. There are no restrictions. That, that yes, no yes, that's all leased and mm -hmm. it's just yes. on lease from them. So the ownership remains there. Did he there. have a family? Or, I mean, do, Who, did you get to know his family? Yeah, there was a Mrs. Miller mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think they had children. I don't remember any children. A horseman, and he taught everybody mm -hmm. to ride. And then, of course, he had a lot of cowboys working for him, about a half a dozen at least. Mm -hmm. Was Frank Bogert on the scene? Uh, yeah, was, Frank Bogert. Uh, he was always involved in every I think sort he of married stable. one of Trav Rogers' daughters, didn't he? Originally? Not that I know of. No, oh, pardon me, I don't think so, dear. He married no. Janice Bebo. And was that his first wife? So far as I know. No. Janice who? Bebo. Her mother had the uh, yes. jewelry, oh, she, no, that's jewelry right. place, yes. No, that's so far as I know. Frank really was, uh, he wasn't out here a great deal. Right. At least in my experience, he didn't go on the rides. He was a pretty busy guy, you know, he was always doing something sure. else. Well, I think he was the original manager at Thunderbird Country Club. Yes. He was instrumental. And getting that going anyway. Yes. Yeah. But what he did do, and then we, uh, one time he came out and, and when we were having the professional rodeos out here, mm -hmm. he announced once or twice on that. Yes. Oh, he's a very he was colorful involved guy. In, in many aspects of the riding. So yes, PR yes. But he really village. was not, I would yes. say, and I think he would agree, he was not particularly close to the ranch. Right. He had, had so many other interests. Mm -hmm. What about other families that, that you, you know, well, whose, there whose children that you were Colquitt family were from, I guess, from Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You remember you say people yeah. came from all over? Oh, yeah. Literally mm -hmm. all over. A lot over. of Midwesterners. And many Pasadena people. Mm -hmm. Pasadena was, it was always, but there were a lot of people from quite a distance. 
they that uh, and then you mentioned the train uh, do you remember this is backtracking a bit but do you remember the train now it's I don't remember the train no. coming out mm -hmm. the train. Well, I remember coming out here, but yes. not coming to Smoke Tree on no. the train. No, that, we yeah, didn't I have that train, only ran twice, I think. Coming to <laughs> California from oh, yes. the Midwest mm -hmm. by a train. Mm -hmm. And the station was way out, you know, out in Ten the wind. Ten miles out. Yes, yes. I mean, we used to have, the branch used to have to go out the station wagon and meet the people coming in on the trains. The trains would be late, and, and sometimes you could hardly, the wind was so terrific out there, you could hardly get off and on the train. That would have been mm -hmm. a very long journey. But I understand very pleasant, very interesting. The train rides were fun. I'm trying to remember how long it took. I think it was days, two right? days and two nights or mm -hmm. something, yeah. or maybe longer. Three days and two nights, I think. Very mm -hmm. It was long. It was long. Coming oh. out in the California Limited, but not to Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. would you would have had to have brought um, lots of equipment, lots of, uh, uh, of course, once you were here, you, you owned your house and stayed mm -hmm. here, but as far as shopping for household goods and, and so forth, either Los Angeles or from home, the housewares. And well, we lived in Beverly Hills, actually, yes. so we would make the trip from there, mm -hmm. not from Detroit right. here. Yeah. But, but uh, I was thinking of other people who traveled by train, well, bringing they, a lot yeah. of their Yes, their there a lot of luggage, yes, yeah. a lot of luggage and things. Well, Though you could get almost anything, uh, but already it was close mm -hmm. enough to Los Angeles that you were not. Well, you mentioned the rodeo, and Smoke Tree actually sponsored its own small rodeos every mm -hmm. Sunday. There were two types of them, the, the ranch ones, and then there were the great big um, on the circuit I ones see. where we had all the people, all the well-known riders, and, and, and lots of money. And visit and... No, and they just come in and, and take part in the... Were these the, both open to the public? Yes. The ranch ones I don't think particularly were, were they? Well, they wouldn't have been much interest to the mm -hmm. public. They're yes. kind of like Jim Connors. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> More of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the big ones. Yes, mm -hmm. they were very colorful affairs. Mm -hmm. You mentioned yeah, the... Before the uh, polo, lo polo lounge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Polo field was built, yes. which is now Angel Stadium. Right. And we would have rodeos, and, and Deepwell would have rodeos. Yes. And Rogers and Stable would mm -hmm. have rodeos. And Formal. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they built the... Polo field and uh, uh, square dances involved. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, all had square dances. The ranch had square dances. I think every Thursday night. The regular, or something, yes, or regular affairs and mm -hmm. some very good square dancers. Did children go as well oh, as adults? Always, you see, children were always included in everything at the ranch. That's the children. They'd have their own little squares, and sometimes they'd be in a different place. But square, square dancing was very, very Children popular. Their own little yes, <laughs> yes. And then, and then the had, not heard. <laughs> then they had the big apple days and oh, yeah. all of that. A lot of dancing, a lot of singing, a lot of good, good times. Good, clean fun. Yes, and much of it, and lots of outdoor parties up in the canyons. In fact, I was rather interested one time when someone was looking at some of the films, the vintage films of the ranch, and a young man, and he said, "Gee," he said. Uh, did, did you take all your meals outside? Because uh, <laughs> that was what had been photographed. Yeah, yes. So I said, oh no, there was a dining room. These were just on occasions. But that scene after scene of people mm -hmm. eating in the canyons. He thought that's <laughs> <laughs> everybody ate in the canyons constantly. You both mentioned the flood. That must have been quite memorable. The flood of 38. Yes, that was really quite an experience. Maybe you don't remember Rosine. But it started off so gently, just with a little fine rain falling and it fell for a couple of days and it didn't do much to begin with until the snow began to melt in the mountains. It was late in the, in the season mm -hmm. and the snow melted in the mountains and these torrents of water came cascading down from the canyons and out over the floor and down the whitewater flood channel and it was really a, a very serious thing. It took out the, the bridge connected us with the city, with the, with the village and here we, the ranch was completely isolated. It was the airport. bridge is right over the, what we think of as the wash. Right? Yes, where, yes. Where kind of where Paul D'Amico's restaurant mm -hmm. is. Yes, and that went out. So that left us cut off. There was no gas. There was no electricity. So I remember that the ranch had marvelous smells of cooking because the chef decided the thing to do was to cook everything before the big refrigerator, refrigerators went off. <laughs> so everything was cooked. And then breakfast was cooked in, great in, the, uh, in the pans that belonged for the breakfast rides 
the eggs and all were fried over the fireplaces. And they had quite a few. So it was oil. an adventure. But it was an adventure, but it, and nothing the really, the ranch was, did really, they were up night and day uh, building up the mm -hmm. uh, dam in the back there. And so they, none of the homes? No, no home was lost, and it was just for those, and as it happened, the Markhams were away, and the manager and his wife were away, so it fell to the junior members of the uh, staff, which like I was yourself. one, yes, to sort <laughs> so of pick up the pieces. It. And all I could think of was, I said, what a wonderful opportunity. Let's have a square dance. So, <laughs> so we had a wonderful square dance under the oil lamps, and that's when poor the Wentworths arrived, it, um, going through incredible hardships to get there to discover that everybody in, in having a was wonderful having marvelous yeah, time. <laughs> having a marvelous time to square dance. So we had when help arrived, yes. did, did most of the families have have meals for those twenty four hours or whatever at the clubhouse? Because yes, they could come down. Couldn't yes, exactly yes. At, at some of them had gone back. Some of the houses. It was late in the season, so what not did you every. Say it was about May. I have the date, but I don't recall right now, but it was a very late rain. It was not, uh, though the snow was packed was still in the mountains, so I think we better leave that sort of yes. dangling well, as to exactly what time it was. Snow as late as yes, May. yes, so that. Well, when was our other flood? Just about six years ago. Yeah, wasn't there was it? another one, yes, which was not as serious. And we uh, ended up, Rick and I ended up at Jackie Coveney's. Yes, we're, you, you were evacuated mm -hmm. they, as as precaution, just as a as a precaution. Everyone was evacuated. A lot of people went to the spa. Yes, and about, and the Red Cross came out. Mm -hmm. I know my husband, was chairman of the disaster committee of the Red Cross, so he was out here whirling around doing what he could. That was oh, it's. Uh, but that apparently, they've done a lot of building since then. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and, and there's wonderful course. flood control, which you undoubtedly have material on. But as it happened. Just the year before this flood, in fact, when Fred Markham took over actively at the ranch, one of the first things he did was have a very good flood control built at the far mm -hmm. end of the ranch, which held. Yeah. Yes, this is a rather vulnerable situation. Yes. Right here. Oh, yes. yeah. But not now, because yeah. there's a terrific, uh, that, and then that was the first part that was finished of the, uh, one of the first parts of the Old Valley flood control. But it, so it just it was fun for the young people. Now, yeah, I had a young wonderful children time. children had a terrific oh, time. Oh, sure. Yes, mm -hmm. it, when they, people talk about uh, selling candles and, you know, actually making money by yeah. making candles and yes. selling them. Well, they made so their own candles out here, out of Ferro Wax. Extremely uh, uh, inventive when mm -hmm. it came to. Yeah, to the and there were, of course, mm -hmm. some very bad losses, and there's some loss of life, and it was not really funny. But no. after all, what could you do and make the best of it? And especially with the responsibility of a, it was quite a full mm -hmm. house in the guest ranch. And the responsibility of all that. And what month was that? Do you remember? That is what I, I think it was March. Later in the season then? Yes. This one I'm talking about was February. Yeah, which, but this <laughs> was very late for a, a mm -hmm. rain, and rain. And it wasn't, it was not the amount of rain really. It was the, the melting the of the late, off. yes, the heavy yes. snowpack in the mountains. It had been very heavy that year. And the runoff from that, that was so bad. Well, we have lots of interesting stories about the flood and what people have done and having the water mm -hmm. go through mm -hmm. Francis Stevens School and so forth. And it just went wherever it pleased. And, uh, people have, uh, have survived that and, and lots of other problems with inherent desert. Rosine, you actually attended Palm Springs High mm -hmm. one year. That would have been in 1940, I believe. And, uh, that's and you mentioned it, some of the uh, well, it was that the, you, your friends. That yeah, Walt Coblazier was yes. a... What, what was he like in those days? Well, he was sort of the big football hero. And uh, let's see, there was Bill Gibbs, who worked for our radio station one year. He's still the big go-getter that he was in, even in high school. And I played his mother-in-law in the senior play. <laughs> I was two years ahead of myself in that. <laughs> and um, it was great fun. You were also and on the tennis team? When I was on the uh, Palm Springs High School, high school tennis, tennis team, team with Jane Ellen. Yeah, I was say Jane Ellen Parker. Jane Ellen was seated one, and I think I was four. And she, she was and I were, were doubles partners. She was from the ranch, too. Her I mother see. had a, they had a house here at Smoke Tree. Mm -hmm. Jane Ellen was Was quite it small? Was the school? Get a I can't remember how many students. I think there were about 50. Probably. Not many more than that. Probably. I, I'm not aware of now that. No, I think there are 5,000. Yeah. 
Two, two thousand, uh, almost three thousand. Mm -hmm. Someplace but in there, but it was certainly has been incredibly. You mentioned going on strike. We went on strike, and I can't. I'm, I'm not too clear on all these details, but they fired everybody's favorite teacher, and we went on strike. We just said we wouldn't go to school. <laughs> Ended up down at the soda shop in the middle of town. <laughs> I didn't Did know about that. Yeah, was he or she rehired? I think she was. Good. I think we prevailed. <laughs> well, that's one. I missed out on that. I didn't know about that. Oh, yeah. Do you remember some of your other teachers? No, I don't really. Uh, it's a long time ago, yes. Nan. Yes. And you were there only the one year. <laughs> yeah. Years, and what did you do when you you got back to the ranch? That that was what mo where most of your your activities took place. Well, we got out of school about two thirty. And then I would come home and go riding immediately. Mm -hmm. As everybody mm -hmm. else did, it sounds as everybody And Betty, you raised your son here as well, and he went to school, he went to your school when he was a young mm -hmm. young boy, and then he went away to school, and he also attended Palm Springs High School yes. very briefly. Not too briefly. Oh. No, no, he really didn't. He, I, he left there. He res uh, In his uh, senior year, he was interviewed from Claremont Men's College, and they offered him early entrance into college, mm -hmm. so he went without compl without finishing the fourth year. He went up to Claremont Men's College, but he had all his high school. I no, I beg your pardon. He was at La Loma Feliz for one year in Santa Barbara, but in general, he was a product of Palm Springs High. As mm -hmm. a teen, uh, what was the nightlife like? Was was there anything to do? For me, it was negligible. <laughs> 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 Not much to do no. other mm -hmm. than an occasional. Bowling. I remember when Charlie Markham and I used to go to the movies religiously every weekend when he would come down from school. Mm -hmm. Did you have philosophy? <coughs> yeah, and they always had a cartoon mm -hmm. and a, whatever the movie was playing. And that was a big, big excitement. And then if you'd been up early in the morning and had gone riding and had a long ride and everything, everybody had sort of retired early because mm -hmm. they got up for early breakfast and, yeah. yes. and it was... Uh, Charlie and I used to go down and get our horses about 5 a.m. just as mm -hmm. it became light. And we'd take off like Indians right across the ranch and they immediately put in no galloping on ranch and you must stay on certain paths and so forth and so mm -hmm. on. And no riding before 8 o'clock or something. Oh, nice. Whenever the breakfast ride started. Yes, he's a little bit older and Dick's mm -hmm. a little bit younger. I'm right in the middle. I see. And you all grew up together. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in uh, your mother's activities. She, you, you actually settled here. Well, I'm, she, uh, she was very active in the USO yes, I think that's interesting. in World War II. Matter of fact, I think she was the head of the one that was down in town. Mm -hmm. oh, so many of the women from mm -hmm. the ranch were interested in that and then the Red Cross and all of that. Yeah. Because the ranch did, uh, yes, go ahead with that. Gotcha. Well, I remember they had, uh, a, a platoon or a battalion or whatever of soldiers that were being trained down in Indio for the tank Pat corps. That was Patton's Pat group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Patton's group. And of course then they discovered after all this travail that uh, the climate wasn't exactly like Africa at all. I mean it was much hotter. Yeah. Yeah. The Attorney General was yeah. created. Yeah. Yes. And some of the young officers used to come to the ranch to the great delight of the mm -hmm. young people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. on a more frivolous note, mm -hmm. we also talked about nightlife for adults, and you mentioned Betty, that uh, you mentioned the Chi Chi, which was very popular with a lot of people mm -hmm. in town. And what was what was that like? Well, it was like a very good nightclub, yes. and they really had top acts from almost good every good place. Food. Oh, <coughs> oh yes, food was food fine. Was yes, mm -hmm. had a good dinner and a good show, and it was well worthwhile. I think that uh, Schumann did a very good job there. They've never had anything like it since. No, I think no. I remember no. seeing Liberace there. For yes, the first that's time. right. Yeah, they had yes. top acts. Yes, yes, they did. How did that differ from the Dollhouse? Oh, the Dollhouse was a different matter entirely. That was run by Jane Manchester. It was sort of a family affair. Jane Manchester and her brother Don was, and her mother, 
and they. Uh, well, when did the Streebies get into that? That was after Jane left. After it. Jane. Yeah, Jane left. The original dollhouse in '36, or the first one, was up, sort of by the community church up in that area. It was not uh, down in the main, in that uh, location, but a lot of people used to go down to the ranch after dinner. Dinner was a very early affair at the ranch, and then go down and listen to Felix and Leo, who I were excellent Felix musicians. And Leo. Excellent musicians. And uh, so we'd go down, listen to Felix and Leo, and maybe have a little after dinner drink or something like that, and dance a bit later when they got the dancing going. But it was a, you knew everybody there. It was sort of a, uh, like a club. Really, like it? a club, so you yes. Could when you were near, like I, I would go there for dinner, yeah. then mm -hmm. I'd be banished. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but later, I, I spent oh, a lot yeah, of time yeah. there. Yes. I yeah. thought it was a wonderful place, it had a wonderful atmosphere, mm -hmm. and, mar and very good food. Oh, marvelous food. And Did, then, mm -hmm. Betty, you also talked about the dunes and gambling, and I love your description of, of finally getting dressed up, because after all, you were from San Francisco, and, and being able to be formal after all this Western wear. Yeah. Well, I hadn't gotten into the Western wear. This was in 36, <laughs> what I was grateful for, that I had something to wear, because <laughs> I, I didn't have any Western wear, and at that point, <laughs> I didn't have any particular desire to get it, and it was I was that was when I was living in town. I see. But we did go out to the dunes, and so they had. You mentioned that it is a, a gambling. Yes, oh gambling, gambling house, yes, beautiful it place. Was formal. Yes, you did. It peeked at the door to see who you were, and also to see how you were dressed. So the men were in dinner clothes, and this Don't is. They had black tie. Yes, this yes. is before your time, dear. I'll be darned. I'll yes. say. Yeah. We'll talk about elegance, and it was great for me because I had come from San Francisco. I had plenty of dinner clothes and things of that kind, but I had nothing else that was suitable for <laughs> any activities around there. <laughs> Not that I went in the buff, but the rest of the time, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I did have enjoy going out there and getting dressed. And uh, I mean, and lovely parties were given there. I remember that, well, I guess it's right to mention that John Carlos Ryan was here with his wife and uh, from uh, Colorado. And he was very interested, like the dunes, like the gambling mm -hmm. and all. So he would give beautiful parties and have lobster flown in from mm -hmm. some place. And mm -hmm. for the ladies who were invited to the party with their escorts, there would be favors of, of little purses which had money with which to gamble. Wow. Those were and the good old yeah, days. Those were, were the good old days. And I was very popular with the head waiters and the waiters because I didn't gamble, so I just gave mine to the waiters. <laughs> oh, I bet they loved you. Yes, yeah. I don't know what <laughs> Mr. Ryan thought about it. <laughs> So, but it was very and beautiful and wonderful music. But also, there was in that particular place there was a more somber background because up around the dining room and the gambling rooms there were little uh, sort of openings, and behind those were guns. That was a fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if anything this went wrong, was, this was was where more or less Dave Palm is today. It's uh, it fairly far out. Yes, yes, it was not terribly, but fairly far out in. Uh, there's a little uh, uh, group of homes that have been built there, and the one, that, one of the men who was interested in developing that had been one of the croupiers at uh, the dunes, because I went with a friend of mine who was looking at the property and was quite surprised to see him. So that's, he liked, mm -hmm. apparently liked the location and was, had bought the land. Well, it's been a very eventful day <laughs> today, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> including car trouble and everything else, but it's been delightful and we've really learned a great deal about the is there anything else, Rosine, that you... I can't you, think of anything. Now that you live here, uh, after all these years, and... There's really relatively very little change. There is. And yeah, yeah, it's true. It stays that pretty much the same. Of all the, the areas, you know, in, in this town, this mm -hmm. is a, a delightful pocket that is what the same. Betty, of course, you're working on documentaries. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm right with. back in there half the time <laughs> in the area, in the era, because it's the 30s and the 40s that, yes. that these, these particular films deal with. I emerge a little bit occasionally to go a little bit farther into something, but so, and Rosine is very much in it. Oh, so, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we thank you both very much. This has well, been thank you, very Nan. informative. Thank you for your interest. You're